Welcome to the SJ Child Show, where a little bit of knowledge can turn fear into understanding. Enjoy the show. Hello, and thank you so much for being here today, the SJ Child Show. Today, I have a guest that I'm going to be excited to learn more about because um, this is our first time meeting. This is Rich LaMonica. I hope I said Rich, right? It's Rich, right? (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) It's so nice to meet you. Give us an introduction. Let us know why you're here today. Awesome. Uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for the invite. Yeah. So, like I said in the pre-reel, this is uh, always great to meet new people, especially when we're both in cold climates right now, for whatever reason that is. <laughs> but it's an awesome time. Awesome time of year is uh, the new year has started and everything, and everyone's focusing on their new goals. But uh, about me, uh, I am born and raised in New Jersey, uh, the youngest of four. We had a, grew up in a railroad apartment, which if you don't know, is an apartment building, an apartment where none of the rooms have hallways. It's just straight room, 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 room. So you have to walk through everyone's room to get to your room. And I lived in the last room with my two brothers. My sister had her own room for obvious reasons since she was the only girl. And then my mom and dad were the room between us, I guess, as the buffer. And uh, <laughs> being the youngest, I learned uh, learned early to fight because you, know, you had to fight being the youngest with other two adult siblings. And uh, you know, my parents worked hard and showed us the value of hard work and taught us all the right from wrong, uh, whether we learned it right away or <laughs> it took years to learn, it took us a while. Uh, as I was going through high school, uh, my goal in life was always to join the Army, mm-hmm. because I thought the Army was the coolest thing in the world as a kid. I used to sit and watch that. I'm pretty sure it was either the ending of Vietnam or something that was going on in the Middle East with my dad on the news, and my dad was in the Army, so I was like, I always want to be in the Army. Then I was about to go into my senior year of high school. And I was too young to sign up by myself. So I had said, Dad, I need you to sign this form to let me join the Army. He said, no, you're not going in the Army. Enough of us have joined. Enough of us have served. You're going to go to college. I said, whoa, I haven't prepared for college. I haven't taken one class to get ready for college. So he said, well, you better go sign up for them. So I went to my counselor, signed up for all the maths and sciences. I didn't take my first three years of school. And my senior year, instead of being cool and hanging out with everyone, I was going to class with freshmen, sophomores, and juniors Mm -hmm. and learning science and math again and getting ready for college. I took my SATs and somehow I passed them. And I got into Berkeley College in New York for my freshman year. And then I transferred to St. Peter's College my second year in Jersey City. And I played football there for two years. People were finally saying, hey, this college isn't for me. I don't want to do this. I joined the Army since I was old enough to do it on my own. (laughs) 1993 and served 22 years. I uh, retired in 2015 mm-hmm. with uh, four combat deployments along the way. I uh, took it and after I retired, I took a complete year off to basically figure out uh, how to reset my life and also try to find a, my grown up job. And I found that to be like the hardest task I had in my life. But 365 days after I retired, I found a job. I worked there for two years helping other veterans. And then I landed this job I'm in now where I train soldiers before they go to war or to big training events to help them succeed. And in that last three years, I've graduated with my master's from uh, Georgetown University. Congratulations. And now my doctorate. So now I'm, I guess I'm a school person now. I wasn't, as a <laughs> like I said earlier, we all change as we grow. Yeah. Oh, that's incredible. Wow. Well, thank you for your service. And I mean, it, that's a lot of commitment, a lot of commitment, which shows a lot of strength on your parents' part to instill that in you. So that's fantastic. Yeah, I give all all my uh, respect to my parents for what they put up with four kids for one and uh, <laughs> working hard and teaching us values along the way without letting us waver that far outside the gray area. Yeah, I'm an only child of a retired major general in the Air Force. Wow. <laughs> so I can appreciate, you know, like the military life and the can't understand what it's like to have a sibling <laughs> but at the same time you know like it, it it is interesting I remember during those years waiting for letters from Desert Storm to come you know and they would come every few months and I would get just that's all you had back then were these handwritten letters so I hold them dear in, in my treasure box of memories <laughs> much different concept back then than now now it's like instant gratification now so it's yeah it's, yeah. yeah. And it's something that we don't, it's, it's almost impossible. How do we teach kids now how to 
like and have that experience they're on a totally different path and things you know <laughs> we couldn't have imagined right like going forward for them I think a lot of our youth today don't understand what patience is. So writing that letter, sending it, letting it get wherever it's getting, the receiver getting it, them writing and hoping it comes back. That patience to wait for that letter every day, running down to the, the mailbox saying, did I get one? Did I get one? Especially in your case, you were probably a little girl at the time waiting for dad to write those letters. And yeah. you'd be so excited when that one came. Dad's good. He's, he's writing these jokes to me. Dad jokes to me in a letter. So it's great. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, that's exactly it. And I, w- I remember one time in middle school, him coming um, in his flight suit to my middle school, you know, and, and surprising me. It was just, it's, it's such a different appreciation for um, my kids today who see their dad every day, you know, and <laughs> bless his heart. I wouldn't want to have it any other way because I, I know what it feels like to have that missing piece, you know, of, of a family member gone, but um, yeah, but anyways, that's enough about my story. You're here to talk about you. <laughs> no, it's, it's great when we can just understand each other's journeys too, or, you know, even just have compassion or grace and understanding for others. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, that always helps. Yeah, definitely. So tell us what you're working on now. Okay. So, uh, during COVID, like many people, I decided that, uh, I'd, uh, press the, pe- the pedal down and do everything at once. So, uh, 2020, you know, everyone went through that whole whirlwind of everything going on. So every month I was writing just a funny post online at the end of every month saying, welcome to this level of Jumanji. You made it through this one. Now we're going to get to this one. You fought these demons. Oh, every month there was a different fear that they were throwing out there. So yeah. I put that fear in my post. And at the end of the year, I had basically 13 different things that I wrote. And my daughter said, you should put that into a book. So at the end of 2020, I, uh, 2021, I finally finished that book with her help editing. So my daughter helped me edit the book oh. and it came out the 13 step guide to success right here. Love it. And it was published right at the end of December of 2021. It gives you 13 steps to be a successful human, not in business, not in uh, making millions of dollars, but how to be a good human. And uh, so it's doing pretty well. And it's got a lot of good positive reviews. Also, that in that time, I also started my doctorate and I started my podcast. <laughs> At the end of 2020, I said to myself, I got about eight extra hours a week that I don't <laughs> with. What can I do? So I started research. I said, let's start a podcast. So I started the Misfit Nation podcast to try to give uh, veterans a place to voice, to get the pressures of PTSD off their chest. So maybe we'll have them a little longer because we're trying to fight that 22 uh, veterans a day that are dying via suicide. And after my first few episodes, or actually about half a dozen, they're like, hey, we need something else besides our voices. We need someone to tell us how to do things. Mm-hmm. How do I write a book? How do I start a business? How do I get to Hollywood? How do I get into music? Is are the coaches out there that can help us be better at anything? So that's what I've been doing. And so 234th episode posted yesterday. So it's going crazy. Congratulations. Pretty that's Thank wonderful you. to hear. And do you have, are they veteran guests that you have on? It's probably about a 50-50 mix nice. right now. That's fantastic. I think it's so um, special to learn from other people's stories through anecdotal experiences. Uh, you gain so much um, kind of if because you don't know when you're going to come across any kind of experiences. And the more you learn from other people's experiences, you could take that you know a little bit wiser to move right. forward. Um, but there's so much that is needed to be still um healed and talked about as far as ptsd and trauma from you know veterans how do you start like where do they start once they have come home and they you know just they don't know where to start where what is a good place we can tell them today is a good place to start First thing you got to do is understand you have a problem. You're not the same person you were when you left home. You're not the same person you were when you went to war. You change. And for me, it was nearly uh, nine years or so before I admitted something was wrong with me. Mm-hmm. So 2003, four, I went to Iraq, my first uh, in-face combat deployment. I came back and my wife and daughter both said, hey, something's wrong with you. I went back in that 2010 to Afghanistan, came back. And when I came home, I knew something was wrong with me. So I went and asked for help. And they told me, no, you're a senior ranking person. You need to go back and lead. Take care of yourself. I said, okay. So it wasn't until I retired, really, where I finally started getting help. And 
I once you realize that you need it, you have to go get it. You have to let people know you need it and you have to go get it. Uh, I'm not saying go to the VA or go to Dr. X because no doctor, no two doctors or no two people are the same. Yeah. So you have to find that one person that actually fits you. And it, it took me to go to a civilian doctor to sit with him and, and chat with him. And I went to him, I think, for six straight months. And he got me into a better glide path and made my head way better. And that's that's what helped me to propel to where I am now. Oh, that's such great advice, too. Yeah, so just don't quit. Yeah. Right. And listening to your family, understanding that you gone through something serious that they couldn't possibly imagine, but that they can still see the effects that it's having maybe on your day to day life. So I think that that's really um, kind of hard for people to listen to, but right for them to to hear. Definitely. And, uh, yeah. and when it, it takes, like I said, you, you have to understand that you are, you did change and you're not the same person you were when you were 12. You're not the same person you were when you were 18. And a lot of these young, when the war was going on, a lot of young 18, 19 year old uh, women and men were going from high school to training to war, like immediately with no, Hey, this is what you need to mentally prepare. And then they get there. They, they lose a buddy they lose a friend. They see something happen. They see a kid that they got killed by accident and, that's in their head forever. Yeah. How do they deal with that? There's no, there's no puzzle piece that says, "Hey, how to do it." You would need help. You got to get help there. It's out there. You just got to reach out, and other veterans will help you. Other people will help you. First responders, they're always good about helping. They, mm-hmm. they have the same issues. First responders, and so they have a big network of things that they know we can go to as well. Oh, I love that. So let, now let's go to the opposite end of this and look at the beginning of the journey. Now that you have all the experience to look back. What's the best way to prepare to do this? I think uh, in my case, the best preparation I had was having a strong family background and my parents teaching me resilience and teaching me how the value of hard work Mm -hmm. and a a positive mindset. And that helped me out a lot. And I can tell as I was struggling through things that maintaining positivity did help me. I never got so down where I just couldn't function. So having that strong, positive mindset knowing that there's going to be light at the end of the tunnel. You don't have to stay in the darkness forever. You have to keep pushing forward, get up every day and start stacking victories. I mean, if you, if, even if it's the one victory a day where you wake up, that's a victory. Mm -hmm. The second victory by making your bed and then brushing your teeth and count them up as you go throughout the day, just stack victories every day. Mm -hmm. And I think that helps everyone will will help everyone as they go through their, their journey or the battle. Mm -hmm. And I like what you said about humor, because I think that, Humor can be used dually in um, defense mechanisms, probably for some, but also for enlightenment and for just to help us um, kind of get into the groove and maybe uh, see a different perspective. Because when we change our mindsets, uh, we're oftentimes able to see perceptions a little bit differently and different opportunities come. Definitely. Yeah. Like, humor, humor helps, like you said, both ways. Both It's a mask or it's a, just something to get everyone in a better way to make them laugh, make them mm-hmm. forget about why they're upset for at least a few minutes. And then mm-hmm. Exactly. Drive forward. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and as a speaker, I think that you have to learn how to use humor to maybe draw your audiences back in or, you know, connect with people. Um, so uh, yeah, I think that it definitely has its places, you know, in where it needs to be. Um, and even for a serious topic, as we're talking about, you know, with, with veterans and, and PTSD, I mean, there also has to be a light at the end of the tunnel. Like you said, um, what type of resources, like like you said, a, a doctor's office, what other type of resources are out there? Um, uh, podcasts, right? To, there's probably now that that's a, a newer thing out there. <laughs> Podcast is a great medium to find, find a show that you can listen to. And a lot of, there's a lot of shows that talk about mental health. And there's a lot of shows that talk about any, many, many different health uh, uh, issues or uh, diagnoses. And, uh, you can find one that fits the niche you want, or if you just want a comedy one, you, there's a ton of comedy ones or true crime. If you don't want to watch true crime on investigation discovery. You can listen to it all day on a podcast, but there's always something out there as far as th- that medium. But there's also a lot of organizations out there, nonprofit organizations that can help you. Uh, Team RWB, uh, Travis Mannion Foundation, Wounded 
Warrior Project. Uh, there's tons out there that are there with resources waiting to help you. You just got to reach out and say, hey, I'm, I'm Mr. X or Miss X and I need help. Yeah. And just get out there and get that help. Now, what if we are the family member of someone who we're noticing might need some help? How do we best approach our, our family member or friend? Uh, if if it's your family member, you know their you know their triggers already before before any issues <laughs> happen. So you know what not to do. So kind of approach it lightly. Uh, I don't say walk on eggshells, but just approach the subject lightly. Say, hey, last year you were so much happier. Now it seems like you're down. What's going on? Is something going on you don't want to talk to me about? Or, hey, let's go out. Let's go do a run. You used to like running. If they say no, then why not? Why don't you want to run? Oh, then that's another thing. That's another sign mm-hmm. symptom that's telling you, hey. We need to get you better. Then maybe the best step would be, how about we go and, and find someone to help us? Yeah. Because it's an us thing when it's a family unit. If it's a friend unit, it's a little trickier, but you can still do the we us thing with friends too, especially if they're a good friend of yours. You don't want to lose a good friend. Yeah. Say, hey, let's let's take care of us so we can hang out next year and go fishing or go hunting or do whatever we do together. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I think that that's so important to know how to approach your friends and family, but to truly just want to have compassion for them. And if you are listening and you want to find resources, please reach out to myself or Rich and we can guide you in the right paths to get help for your friends or families that might be struggling. What is next on your list of things to do? What are you going to do? I mean, you've got the book out and podcast. You don't have time for anything else, Rich. What are you going to do? <laughs> well, I got my next book almost ready to go. <laughs> this one is going to be more of a fictional, uh, fact-based fiction story. Uh, it's a con- conglomeration of a lot of the people I met along my career. Mm-hmm. I put them into characters in this book as soldiers in war and how what, basically the transition back to civilian world and how they deal with the same thing we just talked about PTSD and the fight after you take the uniform off. So I'm about halfway through, I, I was locked far further than I trashed a bunch of it, brought it back. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, like, like you do when you're creative, but uh, now I'm going to spin it to the civilian side where, and send a first half to my daughter for her to destroy it and send it back to me and <laughs> through that process again. And also I'm the co-leader of the Travis Manion foundation uh, chapter here in Clarksville. So we, we try to keep veterans involved with the community when our main focus is mentoring the next generation. So getting out there and doing character does matter presentations and getting young uh, middle school, high school uh, women and men to get out there and, and start leading from the beginning. So they will be the future yeah. leaders of our country. So important. I believe that our youth is just the most important piece of our generation's future and Definitely. so much. Yeah. And so much can be, um, they can be helped in so many ways and they need us strong adults that want to see them have strong futures to be their speakers and leaders and help them to become the next, you know, the next ones for sure. Exactly. Oh, I love that. Absolutely. Now tell us before we go, what's, um, the name of the podcast, your website, where we can get 13 steps to success. Awesome. Uh, my website, which will get you to everything. It has my podcast on there. Our YouTube is on there and the, the, the book is on there as well as our, our merch is on there as well. So it's the, the misfit nation.com C H E misfit nation m i s f i t n a t i o n dot com uh podcast is the misfit nation podcast one word misfit nation and that's on every social media platform as well you got the email is misfit nation podcast at gmail.com and we usually answer within basically 30 minutes usually unless i'm in a meeting at work <laughs> wonderful <laughs> oh it's such a pleasure to have you on today um i i obviously read your profile when I invited you on, but it's been a little while. And I think that, I I mean, I was a a little surprised and like excited to, to talk. And now I'm like, Oh my gosh, of course, this is exactly what I needed. Isn't that funny how those things run into our, our days like that, you know, and just like bring us that, that good talk that we needed to have with someone. (laughs) Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for being with me today. And I hope we can stay in touch. Definitely. It was an honor to be on the show with you. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon.